Hey, folks. Just waiting for everyone to show up to our Good Friday Good Health Day. Okay, I'm getting all set up here. Hi everyone, how are you? Tim, Diane, good to see you. I've actually set up my phone this time so I can see people, so I have an idea of who I'm talking to and not relying on just the comments. Hey Diane, it's just me because Lisa's doing l yoga right now and she's gonna be doing um, the dog food after, but I wanted to do for you guys, I wanted to do something on health today. Hey Jeff, perfect show for you buddy. So, um, I wanted to do this uh, because, again, I was planning on doing this a while back on the uh, Health First Living page that I have, which is really designed to help out my friends that uh, need a little bit of support for um, a healthy lifestyle. So um, I just wanted to basically get some ideas off you guys as to what would be a really good idea if I did this once a week. So basically, we're just going on every week right now, doing different stuff, having a lot of fun with it, finding out what works. And we did discover that I really did enjoy the uh, photography tutorials. So that's something I might do after this all dies down and we go back to work. Uh, maybe once a week I'll do one of those on the, my photography page because um, that seemed to work really well. It was a very relaxing, fun um, hour of editing. So uh, what I've got going on here is basically I'm going to just walk through what I've been doing for the last week and some s just some stuff. I'm just going to throw some stuff out there and see what you think um, because I constantly have friends that reach out to me and are struggling with health issues and I'm certainly not trained in any way to help anybody with <laughs> anything uh, related in health really I can offer opinion and but mostly I can offer motivation and I think that's what I'm trying to do and more of a coach to get things done so basically if someone said to me Mark I'm interested in doing the keto diet but I don't know where to start well I could basically explain to them what I've done and give them some recipes, give them some advice, direct them in the right direction, sh send them a bunch of links that I've already looked at that were very helpful. And then um, at the same time, I might go further into my um, research and discover more stuff. So basically, it also allows me to be accountable for my health um, requirements because now I've got a responsibility, let's say, to you to help with some stuff. So if I can help somebody with some situations, uh, it's great. I helped a friend who had MS, um, and it was good because the results were great. Um, and I had to kind of work at it. I had to, <laughs> I had to dig stuff up, but together we kind of worked it out. So um, I have a friend right now that um, is going through some uh, cancer. So I'm uh, helping them with um, keto. And so I was going to touch on that today. So I was going to touch on a bunch of stuff, but basically I'm trying to help people better their lives. So to get started, think about this. Right now, everybody is staying inside to keep themselves healthy from catching the uh, Hey, thanks, Tim. Yeah. So uh, Tim and I uh, spent some time uh, messing around with the keto diet. Um, uh, basically, what I did for Tim was I was basically just somebody he could send his daily uh, MyFitnessPal uh, records to. He had someone to kind of uh, send that to. And, and Tim said he needs to start up again. You know what? I just started up again. And um, that's what kind of triggered me to do this today because uh, I got into making bread. And uh, believe it or not, I love bread. But the problem with bread for me is it's the carbs, and um, and it, and it's terrible. It's uh, it just does nothing for me. So this is my fourth time around on keto. I have a great handle on it. Within a week, I'll show you my results in a bit of what I've done within a week. Um, I'm not really doing it for weight loss. I'm doing it for a bit of tuning. But the real reason I went back to keto is is for my brain and 
health um, or prevention of getting stuff like cancer and all these other things. And I want to get into that with people. Uh, it's not, uh, it's not, uh, what's the word? It's not woo woo. It's not this freaking crystal stuff. You know me. If anybody here knows me, I don't buy into that stuff. I want to see the science and I want to read about it and I want to see results. So I'm all about that. Um, and the good thing is I have the results. So to get started with you guys, I think everybody here knows my story, but I, I tried to do a little bit different here. This is also an experiment. I'm trying to put stuff up on the screen. I'm trying to get used to working um, this way. So basically, if we take a look at this, this is me on the side 2010. That was me. So that was 2010. That was 10 years ago. I was 230 pounds. I was taking cholesterol pills. Um, my blood pressure was okay. Everything else was okay, but my cholesterol was bad, but I was definitely out of shape. I couldn't, I couldn't really run much. Um, but the big thing at that point was I was, I was tired and I, my, I was really, I wouldn't say I was happy as a, as a person in my life, but I wasn't happy with how I felt, but mentally I was very foggy. And I didn't really realize that until I lost the weight. Now, as a disclaimer, I did not, I went from this weight of 230 pounds at about, at 2000, 2012. By the summer, with help from a friend, Jason Fenton and Lisa Balson, I went down to 175 in six months. And I didn't do that through keto. I did it through low carb, and I did it through a workout routine. Twice a week, I did a workout, and I watched what I ate. I basically went low carb. Um, so I went down now 2000. That was to 2012. Now, I, I kept my weight down the whole time. I did rise up in about just before this picture in 2018. I did rise up to 194. That's when I slammed the brakes on again and said, I am going the wrong way. My, the clothes I had from before were starting to feel tight, and I wasn't, um, I wasn't feeling, a, I wasn't feeling, I was feeling terrible, and I was starting to get depressed because I saw I was losing track. So I know all about the mental fight that you have. So this is me, uh, my first round of keto. Almost sounds like chemo, doesn't it? <laughs> this is my first round of keto. And um, I was feeling amazing there, and I looked amazing. Like, I looked so much better in 2018 than I did in 2010. Like, it's absolutely insane. Even my face, my I look like a completely different person. Oh, hold on. i got to plug the uh, laptop in. One second. I forgot to do that. One sec. Or we will die here. All right, sorry guys, I am back. Technical difficulties, or it would have been. All right, gave you a chance to grab some chips. So, um, yeah, so there I am, 2018. I felt like a million bucks there. I, I, I never, there was nothing wrong. I didn't feel tired. I felt incredible. It's like I was taking some wonder drug. Um, so that was my first taste of um, keto, and that would have been the summer. So July 2018 is when I first did keto for the first time. And I'm, I did it two other times. I, I, so I did that up until the winter, and then I went off it. And I went off it because I started getting lazy. I was working up north, and I was working around people that were saying, hey, want a beer? And I, I, I usually don't drink beer at all, when I, especially when I'm doing keto. So I f slipped and fell. And... Um, so I started struggling with it. So you imagine two, 175 I was, and then I went to two, 194. That was 20 pounds. I was like going the wrong way on the curve. So, you know, we talked a lot about curves in the news. I have my own curves that I look at. So I wanted to bring that curve. I wanted to flatten the curve. I wanted to bring it back down, and I started doing that. So basically since 2018, I've been kind of up and down, up and down. But again, this winter... For some reason, I don't know, I started messing with bread, and I went off my keto. And I think last year was kind of hit and miss. I wasn't paying a lot of attention because I thought that I could just control it without really looking at the numbers. So that's how I got to this stage now. So right now, I'm, I'm going to jump I'm going to jump to this week. So you can see what I've done in one week with keto. Now, maybe I should talk about keto first. Maybe I should. 
So keto is basically a diet where you restrict your carb intake, you have a moderate protein, and you have a high fat content. So let's say, for example, you would want 75% of your diet to be uh, fat, you want 20% of that diet to be protein, and you want 5% to be carbs. Now, a lot of people think that's crazy, but I'm so used to doing it. Um, it's amazing. You can eat lots of butter. You can eat lots of oil. Now, this isn't a diet that people get carried away and say, well, you should be eating all that fat like bacon and all that. You don't do that. Uh, again, 20% protein. You don't have an 8-ounce steak for dinner. You have a 4-ounce steak for dinner. And steak is not a fatty food, believe it or not. Um, so you, you have to learn to juggle to put... Um, fats with your food, like cheeses and uh, whatnot. So t today, for example, um, uh, I fast actually every day. I uh, intermittent fast. I, um, I fast usually 16 to 18 hours every day. Um, so, uh, yeah, I know we can get to that, why you think you should be careful. We can talk about that. Um, so again, I'm not, this keto is something, if you're going to do a keto diet, you have to be very, very careful. So think of this also as a low-carb diet. So you just, if, if you really want to watch your carbohydrates and keep them below 5%, you can get yourself into ketosis. If you go 10%, 15%, you're basically doing a low-carb diet, which is also fantastic. Because the key is you want to keep your sugar low. Because the sugar is what's causing all the problems. Sugar is poison, and it is a killer. And um, I've been doing a lot of reading lately um, uh, on um, how cancer is affected by sugar. Cancer cells live off sugar. And um, so I'm just diving into that. I don't want to talk too much about it because I'm not 100% on it because I've only been through the book once. Um, but I'm going to certainly read up and get deeper and deeper into the benefits of keto and cancer. It's, it's uh, some pretty amazing results out there. So I'm just going to go back and show you. I'm just going to dive in to let you see what I did this week. So on the screen, on the far side, the numbers are when I started April 2nd. So I weighed, um, it's in kilos, and I did do the breakdown. So 100, I weighed 182 pounds, 182 plus pounds um, last Friday. Today, I weigh 178.4 pounds. So I've dropped three and a half pounds in a week. And I really haven't, to be honest with you, I haven't eaten uh, less, but I've eaten better and I've switched over to keto. So I've cut the carbs out completely. Um, the other thing is, if you look at the BMI, my... Uh, Body mass index, it's down um, point, point 0.6 already. And my body fat is already down 1.2. I mean, in a week, that's amazing. I feel my clothes fit better. Um, amazing. And you can see my water, my water is uh, coming up a bit too. So my water, I wasn't drinking enough water. And especially on a keto diet, speaking of water, you got to drink a lot. I should be drinking 90 to 100 ounces to 180 ounces a day. You need to flush your system a lot with a keto diet. So um, again, if you're going to do a keto diet, you got to research it. I can help you because a lot of this stuff you read, these people doing this keto diet, you know, you can buy keto stuff at the store. You can buy keto frozen food. Forget it. Don't even do it if you're going to do that. It's just a waste of time. You got to go clean and you got to do it right. So they're my numbers. So my numbers are looking great. I'm really motivated. Um, I'm going to keep doing that. How long do, Shane, how long do I fast? I, I, right now, I usually have a dessert. Um, I can walk through my, so my routine right now would be, um, yeah, make your own food. Make all your own food. Um, so what I do is um, I get up in the morning. I will have a black coffee. I usually wait about an hour. Do not drink coffee first thing in the morning. You should wait two hours, technically. And the reason is, if you're trying to lose fat, this is very important. One thing, the way you wake up in the morning, naturally, is your body releases cortisol. And cortisol is a hormone. And what it's going to do is, after the cort cortisol wakes you up, it's going to 
basically be stored in your body will be stored as fat. But you'll, you'll get rid of it naturally if you don't um, do anything like drink coffee because the problem with coffee is it also release, releases um, your cortisol level. It works. That's why it wakes you up. That's why when you have a coffee, you feel alive again because it's boosting the cortisol levels. But too much cortisol, especially in men, will basically turn to fat. And that's how you get the love handles. That's how guys get love handles usually drinking too much coffee. That's one thing that'll do it. So uh, you'll store you'll store the, so coffee can actually make you fat. And someone might say, well, there's no fat in it. There's no carbs in it. Yes, but it's releasing a hormone in your body, cortisol. And that cortisol will be in your body and it'll get stored as fat. So that's what coffee can do. So they say wait two hours and let your body naturally wake up with its own cortisol. So what you notice when you do this is um, you wake up better in the morning. Because you're not, your body's not relying on the coffee anymore. It's because now it goes back to its natural way of waking up, and it releases its own cortisol. So that's very, very important. Um, a great black tea, black tea will have um, caffeine in it as well. So you want to, you know, be careful with that. So um, wait, just drink water. Get up and drink water for the first two hours, and then you're going to have that coffee. That coffee is like part of your day. So I've been waiting an hour. I'm getting better. I'm going to push it to two hours. Um, this talk will probably help me because now saying it out loud to you guys <laughs> re, re, uh, dr drums it into my head. So, um, so black coffee, let's say right now I'm getting up at about 7. I should wait till 9 o'clock before I have it. Water and lemon, very good. Lemon is good because it helps neutralize the acid in your stomach. So that's, that's a good thing to do too first thing in the morning. Um, and even even lukewarm water, whatever you want to drink, whatever is fine. So that's that's what I should be doing too. I should be adding a bit of lemon. I take my supplements the first thing in the morning. Um, nothing crazy. Um, I do take one thing called rhodiola. It's a herb. Oh, not a herb. It's a root from um, up in the Himalayas. It basically helps me with my attention deficit disorder. It's um, it calms you down but gives you energy. That's what it does, and it does work amazing. So I take that. There's n it's, n it's just a something you buy off a shelf at a health store. It works fantastic for me. I know when I stop taking it, I start getting anxious, hyper. Um, so definitely I stay on it. And it, it basically it's the I don't give an F drug <laughs> or supplement. I just, yeah, I'll, I'll deal with it. So that's what it does for me. So I take that in the morning. And then, uh, so I have that coffee. So right now, being home, it's harder because the fridge is there and there is stuff and going on. So this morning I got up, I had my coffee, I baked six scones, didn't have one. I baked them because um, was I was fasting. I had another coffee at 11 o'clock, black, had that, and then I, uh, oh, it's not a herb, it's a root, it's called rhodiola, R H O I L. Rodeola, rodeola. I can, I can, I'll, you know what, I'll, after this is over, Donna, I'll, I'll pop it in the, um, screen down there. They sell it down in, uh, Bowmanville at the mill. You can get it anywhere. And they have, I use the Now product. Um, it's actually a banned substance in the Olympics, funny enough, because the Russians used to use it. And what it did was it allowed the athletes to be less nervous at the start their heart rate would come down. They wouldn't get all worked up, but yet it didn't affect their energy. So uh, it's not like it's, it wasn't really a, it, it's, is, it, they considered it a sports handy, sports enhancing drug because of that reason. It calmed them down enough so they weren't, their heart rate wasn't racing at the uh, start line. So I take that at um, my morning and I take a couple of, uh, other things, nothing fancy. I don't. I don't uh, have anything crazy. I take some apple cider vinegar through the day. I take some uh, cod liver cod liver oil pills. Um, I take a probiotic, and I do that. So, um, so then I have my coffee at eleven, and then today I went for a walk. And I actually, before I went for the walk, I did. I had one of the scones, so it would have been about. Maybe 12 o'clock, 1 o'clock. I had a scone that I made, low-fat uh, scone. And actually, I can bring it up here because I put that on the slide. So I had this at 
11 o'clock. I put lots of butter on it. Um, there's three three grams of carbs in one of those. Maybe not even that. Three grams of carbs. And lots of fat. So I had that. I went, walked the dogs, and I went for a 5K run. And I came back at about 2. And Lisa cooked some, heated up some vegetables. I had a little plate of the vegetables, but I poured a tablespoon of MCT oil on top. It's all fat. It's a median chain triglyceride, and we can get into that later another day. I had that. It's a fat that gets right in burning fast. And then, so I had that. And then before I did this podcast, I made a latte that had about um, 13 grams of fat in it. And um, it's like a... They call it a bulletproof coffee. I kind of have my own that I make. So that's what I've had today. So I've had two of those scones. They're about 120 uh, calories. My drink is about 120 calories. So that's three, 400. That's my lunch today. That's all, I'm gonna, that's all I've had till dinner. But the thing with a keto diet and with fat, the thing that tells you that you're full, that your body knows it's full, is fat. Fat is what turns the receptors off or on, however you want to look at it, that you're full. The problem when you're on a carb diet is you have to stop eating mentally. You have to say, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm not having any more. Like I can eat a half a loaf of bread, but I can't eat more fat than my body says it can require. So that's the key with a keto diet. If you're doing it properly, you will be, your body will say, you know what, I've had enough. I just don't want no more. I don't feel like eating. I'm done. Whereas with a carb diet, with me, I would, eating to the point where I was bloating, I was blowing up, and then I would say, oh, God, I can't eat. No, 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 take it away. And I started feeling guilty, and I I shouldn't eat no more. That's the difference for me with these two diets. Um, So, yeah, so then, so tonight for dinner, I... I don't know. I might have a cup. I probably don't have any more coffee today. Now that's it for me. I'll probably have a. Cu- I'll probably have two or three cups of tea. I like tea, so I'll have like a chai tea, um, maybe two. And for dinner tonight, I'm just gonna have what I had last night because I the other day I cooked a half a. I t- cooked a pound of ground beef, and I've divided it up into um, three or four servings. So I'm gonna make two more wraps tonight with it, and maybe a salad or whatever I got. To me, dinner is now that I do the keto diet, I just, I'm happy to eat whatever I, as long as I get my fat count in, that's the key. And that's where I use the MCT oil or an olive oil. If you count your calories or your carbs, you know what you need in fat. At the end of the day, you might say, geez, I got to up my fat. I'll just have a spoon of olive oil extra on my salad and I get my fat in. You have to keep your fat levels up. So that's basically my day. So I would, if I was working, I've gone. I usually go eighteen hours fasting a day. Sometimes I'll, I've actually skipped lunch altogether and just had dinner and dessert. Actually, I missed dessert. Dessert is tonight would be a piece of cheesecake that Lisa made, um, and basically all it is is mascarpone cheese and um, mascarpone cheese, and I think she puts. Uh, cream in it and that's it there's no sugar we don't put any sugar in it and what we do is we heat up a few blueberries and put them on top and that's the only sugar that i would have in a day so those blueberries there's a little bit of blueberries in those scones that you see on the picture that's all i'm having for sugar in it there's no sugar in there's not even artificial there's not even a natural sweetener like uh, xylitol or uh, swerve i don't use any of those uh, sugars that they give you in a lot of keto recipes. So if you go out and buy a keto bar at the store, that's um, it says it's oh it's, it says a keto bar. I guarantee you there's going to be a bunch of like monk fruit in there. Now there's nothing wrong with those sh- sugars. Um, they're like alcohol sugars, but the problem is I don't like the taste or the aftertaste uh, of them. So I basically avoid them altogether, and I like to just add that little bit of blueberry on the top. So I find butter. <laughs> sweet when you cut it all out it's amazing how you change your taste buds change so um that's what i do now i was talking about one of the reasons i do this so the thing is a lot of people go on a keto diet and they say to lose weight well i don't really need to lose weight i do need to tone up a little bit for my personal preference 
Um, everybody's weight goal is personal. Uh, if you start judging people or start expecting them to do stuff, it's ridiculous. If someone comes to me and says, Mark, I want to lose 20 pounds, I said, great, how can I help? I wouldn't go to them and say, you got to lose 20 pounds. It's not like that. you got to learn, and, and this is one of the things I learned along the way, especially with myself. The people that helped me, basically, they helped me, but it was up to me to do it. So um, you can only do so much. Um, but so, so the main reason that one of the things I discovered with keto is it has so many good benefits to it. And one of them, believe it or not, is cancer prevention. And, you know, you get older and you start hearing things. I mean, I'm 56 this year. And you, I know I've got friends that have, have gone through this stuff. I've got friends now that are going through this. Um, and a, a lot of it is our choices that we eat can affect, one, getting cancer, and two, treating it. So... Um, I used to work in the woodwork industry around a lot of chemicals. So um, I know in the back of my head, I, I've been kind of dodging a bullet because I was exposed to a lot of chemicals. So I wasn't wearing my mask a lot. Um, so th one of the reasons I do it is because I, I, the research that I've seen on the keto diet with um, how cancer basically lives off of sugar. Um Basically, uh, a cancerous cell will have uh, basically these little um, receptors. They work um, like insulin, and they draw in the sugar, and they eat the sugar, and then they start to mutate from there. Thing is, especially in the brain, you can starve the cancer by cutting out the sugar. And some of the other things I've been reading about, now this is just stuff I'm reading, folks. I'm not telling you it works. It To me, the evidence is there that it works, but that's up to you really to go and, and read the books. But what I, w what I was seeing was the keto diet can also help the cells, the normal cells, the good cells, when you're going through something like chemo. It helps protect them. Now, I'm not going to get into the book. I, the book I read, I heard all this. I don't know all the details, but it's really fascinating stuff. So that's a positive side effect that I'm getting from it. Plus, my brain functions so much better. I feel so much clearer. So going back to um, how, my, how I feel, I feel incredible this week compared to last week. And I kind of was doing that. I was trying to create an analogy, and I came up with it's kind of like when you put on your glasses. You put on clean glasses, you buy your glasses, they're clean, they're perfect, and everything feels good. You can see everything clearly, and then they start getting a little bit dirty. Well, imagine if cleaning your glasses was a real big chore, which it's not, but let's say it was. It's kind of like um, how you start to feel. If you start eating, like you go out, for f you go out and have a big Indian dinner, oh, you feel crappy after but the next day you get up and then you do it again. You start feeling a little bit crappier, but then you get used to how you feel. And that's what was happening with me, with having a few beers, having the breads. I started to basically get accustomed to this feeling of fogginess. So it's like wearing the glasses. Your glasses keep getting dirty, but if you don't clean them, you kind of adjust to this haze on you're in. But then you go clean the glasses and it's like, oh, wow, this is great. So I was kind of coming up with some sort of analogy, kind of like let's say you lived in a, a glass house and obviously cleaning, cleaning the windows in a glass house would be really hard or a glass box, but when you did clean them, you would see things so much better. So that's basically what I look at dieting as. It's, it's like we know we need to do it. We know we need to make a change, but we just, one, don't want to give up this... Uh, craving fil fulfilling these cravings that we have and that's another thing dieting on a carb diet for me is uh, so hard because you the craving is the carb you have to change so basically on a carb diet your body is working and running on sugar glucose you eat the carb so your body knows the only way it's going to get fuel is if it takes it in but with a keto diet when your body switches over to burning ketones your body can also burn them from within because they're stored. And that's the big difference. And then because you can take them from yourself, your your uh, cravings are gone because now 
your you, you, your body knows you don't need to take them in. It's amazing. And I'm finding that the fourth time around, it was easier for me to get into keto this time because I've done it a few times. I think my body's kind of remembered the pattern. Um, you do feel a little crappy at first, the first week, though this week wasn't bad, though I have been home resting a lot more. If I was working, I might have felt tired and crappy, maybe a little bit of a headache. Um, but yeah, I made a, might have um, been feeling crappy. So uh, that's basically where I've got to um, with it now. So I feel I'm pushing along good. Now, uh, speaking of that, for those that are interested, this is the book I've just read. I'm going to read it again. It's only an hour and a half, maybe two hours tops. Yeah, exactly. The keto and low carb will get rid of the diabetes and the weight. And yes, once you, and the thing is you were doing it, but Sandy, you were doing it together. And that's the key here. You both supported each other. Um, you were supporting each other, and I think that is uh, fantastic because um, it is hard when there's one person. I'm lucky because Lisa supports me on it. Um, Lisa did do keto once, and I honestly agree when she did the keto, that was her best she ever felt. But right now she's she's a vegetarian, though it's easy to do if you're a vegetarian. But she's, she's thinking about it, but she's, again, that transition. Do I want to give up everything to do this? And the once you've given it up and you've gone over to the fat, it's it's easy. Looking back, it's like, oh, why was this so hard? But the thing is, it's getting there. It's giving it up because you know your mind's telling you, I want this. But once you've given it up and switched over, it's so much easier. So that's the battle. And I think that's where support is needed. That's where little conversations like this are required because we all struggle with it. I'm not coming on here telling you it's easy to do because I was making bread and eating friggin' half a loaf of bread. And then I was starving myself afterwards because I didn't want to gain any, put any extra calories in me. You know, I was, I was conscious that I didn't need to eat the calories, but I wasn't eating well. I was eating carbs, which was just basically, I was getting up in the morning. I was hungry. I started having toast for breakfast. Right now, I don't have anything. Breakfast is a gone meal. Breakfast stands for break fast. Break your fast. That's what it does. So the minute you eat something, you've broken your fast. And people have been fasting since the Bible. You go back to the Bible, Lent, all those things, uh, all the religions around the world figured out, or the cultures figured out, that not eating is good for you. If you look at epilepsy, they treated epilepsy back in the, I guess, 1920s, and 1918s, and 1910. They, even before that, they treated epilepsy by... Uh, fasting by not eating. So kids that had epilepsy, they, they wouldn't feed them. And when they didn't feed them, they didn't have these seizures. But then they realized there was a lot of complications by not feeding someone for 20 days. Um, so uh, they went to, they figured they could eat fat and it wouldn't cause the seizures. So then they've been tr they were treating s epilepsy with keto a ketogenic diet up until they made a drug for it. And I've been reading that the drug um, has some side effects where keto prevents all the other things that they that w that, um, that the drug doesn't do. So um, a lot of people that are epileptic um, are, are trying to do a keto diet or should be trying to do a keto diet because it's fantastic. But obviously, it's something the doctors talk to. But there's a whole bunch of doctors out there that are working on this and work with these patients. So again, yeah, <laughs> crazy what it does. But for the brain, it's fantastic. And now, uh, brain a lot of people with brain tumors, um, keto the keto diet is basically stopping the growth of um, these tumors. And there's a BMX rider, Josh Perry is his name, uh, if you look him up online, Josh Perry, uh, he has he's had four brain tumors, and basically the last two, he, he I don't think he had, I think three, I think he I don't know if he had a fourth. I know he had three. There was talk of possibly a fourth, but basically he controls the growth of these because um, some of them there's some operations and some treatment that he can't have because of the location of the tumors. He treats these tumors with a ketogenic diet. And he keeps going back for the checkups, and they're finding out that there's no um, there's no more 
you know, growth. They're staying stable, and he's, um, you know, living a normal life because of it. A great story. I'll put the link in here of his podcast. I uh, just shared it with a friend. Um, but, yeah, Josh Perry, uh, BMX writer. Um, so I've spent a lot of time going into podcasts, listening to certain people. Um, there's all kinds of guys out there that study this and uh, definitely works. But, um, again, it's finding what works for you. Yeah, the uh, I posted the – Sandy, I posted on – so Health First Living. Maybe I'll bring that screen back up here. Let me bring it up so you can see the uh, – Health First Living uh, is a Facebook page I have. I, I have about 170 people that follow it. Again, it's not um, I'm not in it for a popularity contest. It's a place where I keep myself accountable, and I post my recipes. I post my uh, stats, uh, my weight loss in there, uh, anything I find that's neat. Um, and that's where I would like to do this little talk down the road is posted in there. It's more of a um, – there's probably a lot of people on my page that can't be bothered to, you know, look into something like this. So – um, I'm learning that maybe I'll once a week keep it over on the uh, health page. And uh, like I said, if I help one person, I'm a happy guy. So, uh, But again, it's up to everybody to do it. Um, there's no magic here. You just got to dive into it. But once you start, I think Tim, if Tim's still here, he can, he can vouch on the fact that once you get into it, it's okay. But it is easy to get out of it. I, it's, it's a drug. Uh, eating sugar is a drug. Um, we know how great when you, you bite into a donut or you bite into, um, you know, a freshly toasted piece of bread with butter and jam on it. it uh, it's amazing. You know, that cold beer on a sunny day is, uh, is uh, it's amazing. But I've, I've got to the point now where I know how I'm going to feel if I do that. So I know now, like, there's no way. I can tell you right now, I'm so against the idea. Like, you could, Lisa could come down here with a bag of chips. I wouldn't even have one. I wouldn't, no way. One, I don't, I know I shouldn't have it because I'm on a different path right now. But two, I don't, I don't feel like having it. And that's the difference. Last week, I'd have probably had a whole bunch of them. I think I did two weeks ago. Lisa and I sat and I had a whole bag of Lay's chips. Absolutely ridiculous. But... Again, I'm normal like everybody else, and that's what people need to know. We're all normal, and we're all going to have these moments, but it's kind of how it, take the gladiator effect and try to tough it out. So um, one of the other things, so that's it. Now, the other thing is intermittent fasting. If you want to understand about intermittent fasting, I mean, I'm not going to make videos because guys have done all the work for us here. I'm just trying to direct people in the right direction. But this is a new book out. Now, I'm I'm referring this to you even though I haven't read it. But Jason Fung is a Canadian doctor, and I read his first book. And now, he's wrote this book with two other people, and he is, to me, the father of intermittent fasting. Uh, he works out of the, a Toronto hospital. Actually, I have a friend that works with him, and uh, this guy is amazing. So basically, it's how, like, Sandy – you you would probably you may have heard of Jason Fung because this this guy um, is all about cutting back the sugar to get yourself away from the diabetes diabetes too. So um, now remember diabetes too. You do not want to mess. You shouldn't mess with keto if you've got a complication like diabetes without even talking to your doctor. Though I went off cholesterol pills without talking to my doctor i read up enough knowing that if i went low carb and exercised i could get rid of them and i did because i was on a low dosage anyways my cholesterol i just had checked mid january is perfect is optimal for my age of 56 in a couple of months my cholesterol is perfect i couldn't be happier with it um so yeah this guy here now like I was saying about diabetes, diabetes one, type one diabetes is is a whole different ball game because if you um, are type one diabetic and you start to mess with keto, ketos can kill you. Um, your body has a hard time dealing with it. You go into um, I can't even remember the word off the top of my head, but you have to be very very careful. But if you're type two diabetes, you can fix it with keto for sure. Uh, what's my opinion on artificial sweeteners? I don't like the taste of them. Uh, I think if I like the taste of them, I might use them. But um, I'm kind of this uh, type A personality and bypass them altogether. 
Yeah, now there's there's a bunch out there, right? Swerve, um, Swerve's one that people use for keto. Um, there's monk fruit. I don't like the taste of it. Now I have had a couple of products made by the uh, the folks over at uh, Nutrition Kitchen that took over uh, the cafe. I've had a couple of products in there that haven't been too bad, and I only really had them for support. I'm I don't usually eat that stuff. Um, I was just curious to try it out. Um, I tried products from another store in Durham region that was keto, and I didn't like them at all. They were, it was, I d- didn't do anything for me. But again, that's that's my personal opinion because I'm not a big fan of. I mean, we cook a lot at home, so you anyone who cooks a lot at home knows that going out for dinner can be disappointing most of the time. And it's really hard to eat keto diet in a restaurant. <laughs> it is. It's uh. I I would normally have a steak and a salad and a little bit of extra olive oil, and um, in order to deal with, you know, but again, that's that's really all you can do in a case like that. But uh, yeah, sweeteners. I wish I could find something, but you know what? I find that once I can, I'm not never had a sweet tooth anyways, so I I can uh, like that scone has that scone had no sugar in it, and it worked out. But so Sandy likes yeah Sandy likes swerve. So, uh, and one thing I don't like is stevia. Stevia, I I can't eat stevia, and stevia comes in so many different things. Um, especially when you get into sports drinks, and s- you know I can't do that. So, um, that's tough for me too. So, uh, but um, definitely look into. Uh, and now these got these authors here that write all these books. If you go on YouTube, they've done so many talks that you can pretty much. Watch a few of the talks and get everything out of the book. And another place to go, um, if you search the Joe Rogan uh, experience, Joe Rogan's podcast, he has a lot of great speakers on there that talk about diet. Um, yeah, some. it depends on the individual because some people aren't affected. Like, you know what? The old story is, you know, one person can't eat this food, but can't eat that. I never liked peanut butter. I could not even stomach almond butter i could not eat i I couldn't even eat a spoon of almond butter but now i can (laughs) it's crazy how uh your how it changes so uh yeah see i can't do xylitol i can't do that either that i can't do monk monk fruit um i've tried them (laughs) i've tried them all uh with cooking yeah so i i think we all have all yeah you know you see if you can use it if you find one you like then you win um but um yeah i just bypass it and i go uh and i'll deal with the uh i can even find an avocado s- i can even find sweetness in an avocado now so uh yeah so you know what this has been great i mean everyone come throwing the questions up and uh you know i think it'll be great to see what people want to do we can investigate stuff I, it would be great to do something on just sweeteners if you guys want to know different sweeteners but again there's so much out there. I don't really want to reinvent the wheel um, because so many videos out there. And I think a lot of the people that do the videos, they want to do them because they want to build a YouTube channel, which I don't really want to do that. I don't, have, I don't have the passion to do that. I'm really doing this to see if I can share some knowledge, and I'm finding this is a great way to do it. If w- I had to say to you guys, okay, 7 o'clock, let's meet at this place and do this, that would be a disaster. This is actually working out better um for doing something like this and the thing is you can always watch this later it's going to be recorded i'll put it on youtube and it'll stay on the facebook page so we can always use it as a reference or someone else can jump in because they're working right now but i i think yeah i think we need us i think it it'll be a good support group for people that want the help and um it's accountability uh when i i was in a bni group when i was losing the weight um which is uh f- if you don't know what BNI is, it's a business business networking business network international. It's an international networking group, and they have like these little places all over towns, and they get like a bunch of business owners together. So I was in there, and that's how I met the the folks that helped train me. That and I went up there and said I'm going to do this, and then I went on Facebook, told everyone I was going to lose weight, I was going to get in shape, and that's what I did. And uh, I would have been th- and. I was lucky, though, because the people that uh, trained me, I made a trade with them. Uh, they gave me a training package, and I renovated their bathroom. 
So if I hadn't have come through, I would have been the village idiot because I, they would have got a brand new bathroom and I would have got nothing out of it if I didn't follow through with it. But the thing is, once I did, I, you couldn't even, I was ecstatic that I had lost the weight and I felt amazing. So now when I start to creep up, I get reminded, you know, pull yourself back, get control. So I look at it as like an alcohol abuse, a drug abuse. It's a sugar abuse. It's a, it's a food abuse. And that's how I look at it. Um, I've, I've abused food in the past. I've also neglected to exercise in the past. And one thing I had to prove to m- after I lost the weight, I had to prove to myself that I could do something. And then I went out and did Iron Man in 2015, which was when I was a kid, I used to watch it on TV and I, I couldn't understand how these guys did that. And I had people I knew that did it and I went out and did it. And um, it was probably the most moving thing I've ever done in my life, you know, Um yeah, Kim, go back and watch it, but what do you got? I got quite a few books, but um starting, uh you know you know what you do? You do you do what Tim and I used to do. Every every you count your calories you count your calories in um w- count your calories in uh my fitness pal. And um basically you, I can help you get set up if you're not using my fitness pal. So send me a message in, in Messenger. And um, what you need to do is you need to count your calories every day. And what I used to get Tim to do was send me every day his his macro pie chart to see what he did. So he had to do that. And uh, you know what? I, I didn't even need – it wasn't even about me reading it. It was about him sending it. It was for him, not for me. I had, you know – so, um, like – Maybe this group will work like that. Uh, maybe we can do that. I had a, actually, Tim, you might remember, there was another friend of mine that reached out to me, and I actually created a little pers- private group for us in here, and nothing really, no one put input into it. So the thing is, I'm not going to chase anybody, but I'll be here for you. That's the way I look at it. Yeah, carb manager. See, the other thing you got to remember, too, is with the carbs, and you're doing keto, carbs are also fiber. So what you can do is if you if you eat a vegetable like a green vegetable um and it's got 10 carbs in it but it's also got f- 6 grams of fiber you can deduct that 6 grams off of the 10 and you're really only consuming 4 grams of carbs. So my fitness pal unfortunately does not convert that but I think carb manager does. Carb manager does. It works that out but it's not as good as my fitness pal as far as finding all the things you're eating. So maybe maybe what we could do is maybe the next if I got a bunch of people on here that are interested maybe we can do a tutorial on the app I can put the app up here yeah net carbs we can put up the um do a my fitness pal um tutorial so why don't next Friday I will do that I will do a my fitness pal tutorial so if everyone downloads it and messes with it a little bit and then um oh the premium yeah i think i did too the carb manager i think I, well i i can look i'll look into the i'll look into it i have one on my phone that does the net carbs but now i know if i keep my carb count low i can still go back in and quickly look at what the total fiber count for the day is and deduct it if i'm that thing but i'm fortunate because i'm doing enough now i know how my body feels and i also i don't have the pictures here but if you go back to the page i have i have a keto blood tester and glucose tester so what i do is this morning i tested my ketone levels in my blood um and i also checked my blood sugar levels in my blood so i started doing that again now i've done keto so i can check to see if i've got like 1.0 1.0 let's say or 1.1 1. 1, uh millimoles or whatever of um ketos in my blood so i can do that but i can tell when i'm in keto i just know i'm not craving food I'm, my body's obviously eating the uh eating the fat and i can tell already like i can tell by putting my clothes on like this sweater i wore this last week this sweater's already feeling better on me it's not getting caught up so um where did I get my sweater from? 
where did I get it from? What were we talking about there? I think I don't get the question. You mean the app? My Fitness Pal? My Fitness Pal is just in the app store, if that's what you were talking about. But um and I think I think too some of the rule like eat like you don't have to get fancy. Like someone reached out to me the other day and was asking about they're getting tired of their recipe book. They're eating uh vegan they're trying to do vegan oh the keto tester. Uh keto mojo. It's keto mojo. Um I'll post a little yeah, if you type in uh keto mojo. Um yeah, it's actually a key ketone tester which you can buy the strips to do the blood the glucose strips um yeah so basically it's like a a diabetic a diabetic it's not it's not a a blood monitor it's a keto tester yeah ketone tester so basically what you want to do is you want to uh you're going to do it like you were um if you were diabetic you want to check your blood level basically what this does is it gives you another little um chip that you put in or those tester slips i forget what they call them i'm slipping my mind now but you put one of those little ones in and you test it there and it will actually tell you how much how many ketones are in your blood now you can do this also through a urine test and you can do it through a breathalyzer test the blood the urine one apparently is not that great um because a lot of times it's really just calculating the the ketones that you're discarding out of your body um the breathalyzer one is newer than the blood test and it's coming a long way it's supposed to work really well i found the best from what i heard the best was the um the blood one now i find too that it's not as accurate as like i can be off about 0.5 on it i could test it and then test it again it's a little bit off so i kind of you know it's kind of like if you've got a car how can I explain it? It's like if you got a car and the speedometer's off, you get used to knowing how much it's off, so you can adjust your train of thought around it. But I, uh, I think really, if you um, follow the carb count, keep your fats high and your your protein, but you gotta count. You gotta count. Even I have to count what I eat every day. It's amazing how especially with fat you you have no idea until you start calculating how much fat is in something like i make a coffee now with 13 grams of fat you'd never even imagine that but you couldn't guess what's in it unless you actually count it so but i find my fitness pal is great with the phone because i everything that i everything that has a barcode on it can scan in and it puts it in for you you just have to go in and mess with a little bit there's a few times you get snagged up on it because you have to you know, figure some things out or it doesn't have the actual measurement that you're using, but, you know, it, every day kind of hacks around that, you figure it out. But um, another thing, too, we can talk about is sleep. We'll do a thing on, we'll do a whole show on sleep, but next week, sleep is so important. People do not realize sleep can prevent even, like, illness, all kinds of stuff. It's it's amazing. Your body repairs when it's sleeping. So, um so what uh, what we'll do is we'll finish up here, and what I'll do for next Friday, I'll put something together where we do my fitness pal, and maybe by then people will start you know thinking about it a little bit more. And remember, it's up to you guys to do it. I I'll help you in here because helping you will help me, but I can't force you to to do it. Right? Everyone's got busy lives and responsibilities, but. You know, if you look after your health first, that's why I called it health first living. You l look after your health first. Everything below that will be looked after better. Your family will be better. Your work will be better. Everything will be better if you feel your best. So that's my approach to life. Like health comes first. That doesn't mean I'm neglecting my wife or my job. It's just that I'm making sure the first thing is I'm healthy. And I want to live to be like I, I was using – an example to Lisa, I said, you know, that guy who is with Trump right now, uh, Fossey, Dr. Fossey, that guy is going to be 80 in December. And to me, he looks 60, like 60 or 70. I can't believe that guy is going to be 80. It goes to show you, uh, he's a doctor, he's probably, maybe maybe he is doing things right, but he looks great for 80, like he's sharp as a tack. But um, I think that's in the back of my head, because I'm 56 years old uh, this year, and... Um, you know, 
15 years, I'm going to be 70. How do I want to be when I'm 70 years old? Do I want to be to the point where I can't even walk upstairs? No. I, so I'm, I'm trying to do what I can every day. So health first. That's my, uh, that's my motto, health first. But that doesn't mean I'm neglecting other things. It, all it means is I'm going to be better off to do my best for those other things. So I'm going to head out of here. I don't know what I'm going to do now. Um, I'm just going to hang out. So anyways, uh, exactly. And a lot of people might think that's selfish, Diane, but it's not. It's absolutely not. I think if you're in the best, how could you look after your wife if you're sick all of a sudden? Or vi you know, how can you do that? How can you, you know, it's, uh, so I think you have to do everything you can. And I, I'm blessed. Um, but I'm blessed the fact that I figured it out. That's what I'm blessed with. Um, because I was going, see, when I was in 2000, before 2012, I would get migraines at least once a month where I would have to go lay down. I have not had a migraine since the first day I started my workouts in 2012. Never had a headache. I've had a foggy head from the bread and the odd little kind of, I get the odd more now than ever. I get the odd little allergy thing, which I had about two weeks ago, and I thought it was, <laughs> you know, it was like getting the corona, the corona 19 virus. Um, but it was just probably because I was eating too much bread, too many carbs, and I was starting to get cloudy. But yeah, I haven't had a migraine since 2012. I used to get them all the time. I had medication from the doctor I was supposed to put under my tongue. I was taking cholesterol pills, all gone. And when I went to the doctor's, just recently in January, perfect bill of health, perfect. And I, what I did was I got all my results from Life Labs, and I went online and I studied every one of them. I looked them up, I found out what they meant, and I looked up charts. I looked up more than one chart to see where I stood uh, with my age and how my health was looking. And because um, I never did that before, the doctor would tell me all this stuff, and I go, "Oh yeah, I'll walk out." I never took any any care in my own health. I just assumed. Oh, you go to the doctor and he says bye. See, his the doctor's job is to really fix you if there's something wrong with send you to the, send you to a specialist or give you a drug for something. But he's not there to coach you. He's not a life coach. No doctor can get you to change your diet, and and you can't expect that from a doctor. He's not gonna. <laughs> he could tell you not to, but you know he's not gonna come home with you. He's not gonna call you every Friday and and tell you what you should or shouldn't do. So, yeah, we're all responsible for ourselves, And then once we get that figured out, we can uh, try to be responsible for our families and stuff. So anyways, guys, I'm going to let you go because you guys have been awesome. This has been, once again, so good for me, so enjoyable. I got to mess with the screen a little bit, put some pictures up there. Um, you know, thanks for being here. And uh, we'll see who shows up next Friday, and I will get my fitness pal sorted out. Tim's going to pull his finger out and get into shape and uh, go from there. But, yeah, and if you got any questions, just fire me a message in uh, Messenger. And uh, the good thing is if I don't know the answer, it'll force me to go look it up. So uh, we're all in this together, folks. So, anyways, have a great, good Friday. And uh, I'm going to come back with Lisa tomorrow. And, oh, by the way, um, something fun uh, – this weekend, uh, I'm going to get our families together and do like a little uh, Zoom private, uh, like a FaceTime kind of dinner thing. So that would be kind of fun. So something you might want to think about with some family or stuff like that. Oh, yeah. Well, you know, I may even change these. Uh, we pick four because we figure we're just sitting. A lot of us are sitting around. If you're working, Kim, that's fantastic. Good for you. But yeah, um, yeah, we'll make it work. And um, but again, you can always go throw questions in this after because I'll get notification that you've commented. So Kim, if if you if you didn't see one of these um, sessions, um, then you just post in there after watching it or why you're watching it. Ask the question, and I can come in and answer it right then and there. So as you're answering it, I c as you're watching the repeat, I will see you post the question. I'll get notification. And then I can come in and reply to you even before you finish the video. So, uh, yeah. But I, I want to do it live because it gives people the chance to interact. Otherwise, I'll be just reading stuff off um, papers. And um, it's better if I'm actually uh, helping and 
growing in and learning this way. So anyways, we'll sign out. It's, it's, it's five o'clock. It's been an hour. It's been awesome. Thank you so much. Have a great night. And uh, Lisa and I will be around tomorrow. If you're around at four, who knows what we're going to do. We'll have a laugh. We'll do some fun stuff tomorrow. We'll goof around. Anyways, thank you so much, everybody. Take care.